Okay, guys, we've got 2 Kings chapter 10, picking up where God sought revenge on Ahab and his wife Jezebel and their sons yesterday, and here we go. Now Ahab had 70 sons in Samaria, and Jehu wrote letters and sent them to Samaria, to the rulers of Jezreel, the elders, and to the guardians of the children of Ahab, saying, Now, when this letter comes to you, since your master's sons are with you, as well as the chariots and horses and a fortified city and the weapons, Select the best and fittest of your master's sons and set him on his father's throne and fight your master's house. Okay, so realizing potential conflict existed between himself and Ahab's family, Jehu was demanding that Ahab's appointed officials either fight to continue the royal line of Ahab or select a new king from Ahab's descendants who would fight Jehu in battle to decide which family would rule Israel. Verse 4. But they feared greatly and said, Behold, the two kings did not stand before him. How then can we stand? And the one who was over the household, and he who was over the city, the elders and the guardians of the children, sent word to Jehu, saying, We are your servants. All that you say to us we will do. We will not make any man king. Do what is uh, good in your sight. Then he wrote a letter to them a second time, saying, if you are on my side and you will listen to my voice, take the heads of the men, your master's sons, and come to me at Jezreel tomorrow about this time. Now the king's sons, 70 persons, were with the great men of the city who were rearing them, meaning that these great men of the city basically raised these kids. Verse 7, when the letter came to them, they took the king's sons and slaughtered them, 70 persons, and put their heads in baskets and sent them to him at Jezreel. When the messenger came and told him, saying, They have brought the heads of the king's sons, he said, Put them in two heaps at the entrance of the gate until morning. And believe it or not, this was a common practice of Assyrians at this time to uh, discourage rebellion. Verse 9. Now in the morning he went out and stood and said to all the people, You are innocent. Behold, I conspired against my master and killed him. But who killed all these? So he was plain innocent here, which was a strategy of his to uh, gain favor of the people. Know then that there shall fall to the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spoke concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord has done what he spoke through his servant Elijah. So in 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 21, uh, God said through Elijah, Behold, I will bring evil upon you and will utterly sweep you away. And will cut off from Ahab every male, both bond and free, in Israel. Verse 11. So Jehu killed all who remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all his great men, and his acquaintances, and his priests, until he left him without a survivor. So getting rid of all Ahab's descendants was approved by God, but taking out the chief men, the acquaintances, and the priests was not commanded by God, and we'll see will have real consequences on Jehu's dynasty in the book of Hosea. Verse 12. Then he arose and departed and went to Samaria. On the way while he was at Beth Eked of the shepherds, Jehu met the relatives of Ahaziah, king of Judah, and said, Who are you? And they answered, We are the relatives of Ahaziah, and we have come down to greet the sons of the king and the sons of the queen mother. So just in case you've been gone a couple days, Ahaziah was another one of Ahab's sons. All right, verse 14. He said, Take them alive. So they took them alive and killed them at the pit of Beth Eked. 42 men, and he left none of them. So taking them alive likely meant to be able to bring them to this pit of death. Now when he had departed from there, he met Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he greeted him and said to him, Is your heart right, as my heart is with your heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. Jehu said, If it is, give me your hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. So Jehonadab was a faithful follower of the Lord and a strict observer of the Mosaic law, as we'll read more about in the book of Jeremiah. Jehu learned that he was a supporter of his policy to purge the land of Ahab's apostate influence. Verse 16, he said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So he made him ride in his chariot. When he came to Samaria, he killed all who remained to Ahab in Samaria until he had destroyed him, meaning all of Ahab's relatives according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. Then Jehu gathered all the people and said to them, Ahab served Baal a little, Jehu will serve him much. So although for most of his life, Jehu was an obedient follower of God, 
we're going to see that he does have a dark side that's going to slowly reveal itself. Okay, verse 19. Now, summon all the prophets of Baal, all his worshipers and all his priests. Let no one be missing, for I have a great sacrifice for Baal. Whoever is missing shall not live. But Jehu did it in cunning, so that he might destroy the worshipers of Baal. And Jehu said, Sanctify a solemn assembly for Baal. And they proclaimed it. Then Jehu sent throughout Israel, and all the worshipers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left who did not come. And when they went into the house of Baal, the house of Baal was filled from one end to the other. He said to one who was in charge of the wardrobe, Bring out garments for all the worshipers of Baal. So he brought out garments for them. Jehu went into the house of Baal with Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, and he said to the worshipers of Baal, Search and see that there is here with you none of the servants of the Lord, but only uh, the worshipers of Baal. Then they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings. Now Jehu had stationed for himself 80 men outside, and he had said, The one who permits any of the men whom I bring into your hands to escape shall give up his life in exchange. Then it came about, as soon as he had finished offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the royal officers, Go in, kill them, let none come out. And they killed them with the edge of the sword. And the guard and the royal officers threw them out and went to the inner room of the house of Baal. They brought out the sacred pillars of the house of Baal and burned them. They also broke down the sacred pillar of Baal and broke down the house of Baal and made it a latrine to this day, which a latrine was a communal toilet, so was a great use for the former side of Baal. <laughs> Verse 28, thus Jehu eradicated Baal out of Israel. However, as for the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel sin, from these Jehu did not depart. See, dark side. Even the golden calves that were at Bethel and that were at Dan. The Lord said to Jehu, Because you have done well in executing what is right in my eyes, and have done to the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart, your sons of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu was not careful to walk in the law of the Lord the God of Israel, with all his heart. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, which he made Israel sin. So his sons would be rewarded for getting rid of Baal, but the day of judgment would come for Jehu, unfortunately. Verse 32. In those days, the Lord began to cut off portions from Israel, and Hazael defeated them throughout the territory of Israel. And this was a result of Jehu. Uh, verse 33. From the Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, the Gadites and the Reubenites and the Manassites, from Aror, which is by the valley of Arnon, even Gilead and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu and all that he did and all his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And Jehu slept with his fathers and they buried him in Samaria. And Jehoahaz, his son, became king in his place. Now the time which Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was 28 years. So how about the life of Jehu? Uh, a lot to learn from him. Um, we've had this lesson before, but there, any man can fall. And uh, we got to be careful with pride and always be dependent and reliant upon God and the Holy Spirit in anything that we do and never rely upon ourselves. Once we start kind of going after our own thoughts and desires that are apart from the word of the Lord, that's when trouble can arise. Okay, guys, thanks for being here. Hope you have a wonderful day and uh, looking forward to tomorrow. God bless you.